do the butt. A while ago, I did a fountain pen flex off comparing some of the most popular modern day flex pens. Thought we should do an update to it because I have a couple vintage flexi pens. So now we could do an old versus new fountain pen flex off. Now, by no means is this the definitive competition. This is the ultimate comparison. I have limited pens, and especially when it comes to vintage. There are some gorgeous wet noodle watering pens out there and all sorts of other ones. But I got what I caught, so let's give it a go. So we have the Noodler's Ahab Fountain Pen Revolution with their Ultra Flex nib, the Pilot 912 with the FA nib, Pelican 140, and an Aurora 88. Now, if this competition was on looks alone, this would be our winner right here, the Aurora 88. At least in my opinion, this thing just is super sleek, gorgeous lines, beautiful materials. It just goes so well together. Really sexy looking, you know, like your classic Italian sports car of age. It's got a nice little ink window in there so you can see your ink. And yeah, it's, it's basic, but looks gorgeous at the same time. So for me, this is my opinion. Who knows what it's even worth. If it was looks alone, that would be the one. But this competition isn't about looks because there are many very beautiful pens out there. So let's get back to talking flex. So this is the setup. We got Aurora Blue Black in the Pelican 140 and Diamine Writer's Blood in the Aurora 88. Yes, I know the Aurora should be in the Aurora, but it's not. Moving on, Newler's Ahab has Majestic Blue, Fountain Pen Revolution, Sargasso C, and the Pilot 912 with the FA nib. Faber-Castell Deep Sea Green. So first up is the Noodler's Ahab. Now since I first did my uh, video, I have kind of heavily modified this feed. A little too heavy actually. But it does not railroad anymore. So we'll just try to standardize the writing sample. Let's just do some basic stuff here. And then we'll also just see the variance from thin and increasing pressure as we go. Next up is the Fountain Pen Revolution. As you can see, way more flex than the Ahab. Same thing. I do find this one is a little more prone to railroading though. And now the oh so popular Pilot FA nib. This nib can be had on many different uh, Pilot pens. You just gotta pay the extra for it. But if you look at my previous videos, this thing does have issues with the feed right from Pilot, which is a shame. So it has an aftermarket feed on it from the Flex Nib factory. And now for the something different this time, the first vintage pen. So this is my first vintage Flexi type pen, Pelican 140. So this is a semi-flex pen. This is not a full flex. And the last pen is this Aurora 88. Now, it runs a little wet, so it's just going to look thicker just because of that. But let's give it a go. So all the writing samples are done, the ink has finally dried, and we were able to compare line variation and see how well they write. So if we're going by the most flex, obviously the pilot would win. 
but is that the only way to rank the best flex pin? Let's think about this for a minute. So how do we declare a winner? There's a few ways to score this. As far as I would say maximum flex per dollar, that would be the Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex Nib. If you want maximum flex, the Pilot FA. As I stated a little bit earlier, if it's for usability, user friendliness, we're gonna go with the Pelican 140. For me, the real way to determine who the winner is, is this. So if I was stuck with only one flex pen for the rest of eternity, I could never buy another one, which one would it be? I, th I think you probably guessed it. It's the Pelican 140. So if we take a close look here, it's the same order as I did before. The Ahab Fountain Pen Revolution, the FA Nib, the 140, and the Aurora. So yeah, but you can see that the FA Nib and the Fountain Pen Revolution are very, very close. The Noodlers is a little bit less than I would say the Pelican are pretty close to it anyways. The Aurora is fairly similar now. You can see it's still just so wet. So some of that effect, it is less flex than the Pelican, but it, some of that, it looking super flexy because it's so saturated right now. But with that Pelican, it's just a little bit thinner on those cross strokes too, just to sort of maximize that ratio visually. Down strokes, you can see there too. And then here cross strokes, and again, these are so wet. You, you you got to be careful just getting near them or they're going to smear. But you can see there's more than enough flex on all of them. But just from a visual standpoint with writing and ease of use, I'm still going to have to give it to the 140. So even though it's small, the nib isn't that amazing to look at. It's gold, cool, but no super beautiful pictures on it. I just find intuitively and just how you write with it, it is the most natural that I have used so far. First and most importantly... It's just a great everyday writer. And when you need it, it might not have the most, but it has more than enough flex. But I have to tell you that being an everyday great writing pen and having more than enough flex to suit what you need isn't just exclusive to this one. It's also with the other vintage pen as well, the Aurora. Now, again, it's it's got some tuning issues going on as well. This actually, I prefer writing with this one more. I, I find the end result is better with this one. But as far as writing, when it's in your hand, it's super comfortable. It's very natural. It's a, just a lovely pen to work with. There's no scratchiness whatsoever. So if this performed a little better and you can you can already see the ink leaking, it just it just it's gonna get you dirty every time. <laughs> oh gosh. Every time you touch it, it's gonna leave you a mess. Put that away. Keep the cap on is dangerous. So yeah, it needs a little tune just on there. It's just if you put a wet ink in there and that little there's an adjuster that's in there, the thing just goes crazy. I think I got it set in the wrong spot. But they are both, as, as far as comparing the, the writing experience with the other ones, even the FA nib, yes, it's got lots of flex, but these just feel better when you're writing with them as well. So when it comes to the question of vintage versus modern, I think you can tell, from my experience anyways, in these two pens that I have, vintage is winning. So these are my thoughts anyways when it comes to vintage versus modern. It's not just the amount of flex. It's also how well the pen feels in the hand and writes and performs. And if you got pens that have been around this long, there's a reason they're around this long and very sought after as well. But if you want to get your foot in the door, the only pen you think you have to get is some Waterman with a super wet noodle nib. And it's a $1,000. Um, you don't have to go all out. You can get this pen here for actually cheaper than you would get this one. And I would pick this one every, every time. Every time, if, if this one went away, I lost it somehow, I'd be a little sad. But if this one got lost, oh gosh, I would try to replace it instantly. So in this competition of old versus new, I'm going to give it to the old. And I feel so strongly about the Pelican 140 in this case. I'm going to have to give it my new Doodlebud seal of approval.
As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Likes, comments, subscribes are welcome. I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. I'll try to reply. And we'll catch you next time.